Ready? Yes. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salat. Hayya ala salat. Hayya ala salat. Hayya ala al-salat Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbi al-Ailamin. Nasta'inahu wa nasta'firahu wa nukminu bihi as wajad. And that is with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, the praise, the thank is for Allah, the Lord of all the systems of knowledge. We seek his help, we seek his forgiveness, we believe in him, we have faith in him, the mighty, the majestic, I witness that there is nothing worthy or deserving of our worship except the one God, Allah, who is without partner or without associate in his rule over the heaven and the earth, both seen and unseen. And I witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his last servant and messenger. I mean, assalamu alaikum and Juma Mubarak. I would like to uh, start this virtual talk, this virtual Juma, I'll put the reading, a prayer first from Imam what is the name Muhammad? But he left us, O oh Allah, I cannot manage this life for myself, not without you. Please make my life what you want it to be, what you prefer for me. Do not allow me to act on my own. Help me act in obedi obedience to only you. I mean. Rabbina la ta zik gulubina baida is hadejina wa hablina mina dunka rahma inakan anta waha. Our Lord, do not let our heart deviate now after thou hast guided us, but grant us mercy from your own presence, for you are the grant to our amen. Assalamu alaikum and Juma Mubarak again. We thank Allah for this day, for this Juma day. And we thank Allah for us being here. You know, a lot of things are happening in the world today. And my subject today, I'm going to get right to it, is recognizing the signs of Allah. It's so many, Allah is always sending signs to us, all the way from Adam until today. And we read it all through scripture, and they say we walk by heedless. But in this day and time, we see more signs than ever been sent before, I, I, I would say. I know in my time. So I want to start with this reading here, Surah 29, verse 29, and yet 46 and 47. And dispute, and dispute you not with the people of the book 
except with means better than mere disputation, unless it be with those of them who inflict wrong and enjoy injury. But say, we believe in the revelation which has been sent, which has come down to us, and that which came down to you. Our God and your God is one God, and it is, and it is to Him we bow in Islam. And it really says we bow as Muslims. And this it is that we have sent down the book to thee. So the people of the book believe therein. Also, do some of the pagan Arabs, but none, none but unbeliever, reject our sign. Sadakal Allah Azim, Almighty God speaks the truth. You know, when I was getting ready for this lecture, I didn't even have that surah. And I was just, when you know, sometimes you open the Quran up and there it is. And I, I, I was starting my lecture off with interfaith, whereas we got to start working together as people in this day and time, signs from Allah. We see everything happening. We're living in serious time now, brothers and sisters, very serious time. All this turmoil in the world, everything is happening, and it's happening in a time when we can see it. And it's a lot of says here. Only the unbelievers will reject the sign. When we read this, we look at coming together as people of faith, Muslim, Christian, Jews, and just believers, people who believe have faith in Almighty God. We gotta start working together more. You know, we have interfaith sessions, we've been having them in our community for uh, probably 30 years now more. And we have interfaith with the, with the Catholics, something that's just about unheard of some years ago. Muslims and Catholics, they say all those statues they got, how can you meet with them? But we come together, on, we came together, our imam came together on common ground, thing that we can agree on. And that's what, what this society needs, someone to help solve the problem in the society today. Because we got a lot of problems in the society. These issues we have today, somebody got to come. And who's going to do it? The religious leaders and the people of faith got to come together. Because we know, listen at this, brothers and sisters, what we're seeing happening in the world, like I said, is we haven't seen it. You got people, their moral compass is gone. No moral compass at all. They'll get up one day and say one thing. And it used to be they'll get up the next day and say something else to, to tell a lie. But now it's so bold. They'll tell a lie one day on, in public and then the next few minutes before you can bat your eye, they'll tell a lie and say, I didn't say that. You know, that's something, brother. I mean, this is these are signs from Almighty God Allah. So the only people, I mean, this Allah sent us revelation. The only people who can solve this problem, people, religious people of faith, not only just religious people, people of faith who have open minds. Now, with these open minds, get me, we're not gonna compromise our religion. But we come together on things that we know we can work on. And we have to come respecting each other, respecting each other as human beings. And we have to have transparency. I was reading out with Imam this new book he got, and he said, We have the new term, it said scriptural reasoning. Scriptural reasoning. That's what we got to have. In religion, in life. We know that there are more things good that we agree on. In other words, it's more good than bad in the society. A lot tells us this. So we got to work together. And a lot shows us this in our holy book. A lot mentioned other religions in our holy book. He mentioned the Christian, he mentioned the Jews, he mentioned the Sabian. And if he didn't mention these, if, if we weren't supposed to be working with these people, a lot wouldn't mention it. So he tells us to come together on common terms, common ground, where we can work for the society and work for humanity. And we got to work with right-minded people. Also, family ties. We here in America, most of us 
reverted to Islam here in America. And we're talking about working with other people, not just Muslims, working with humanity. Most of our family, my mother, my father, my brother, they're Christian. So we got to have a relationship with them and work with them. Sometimes we go to extremes and say, I can't be with, with my family. They're they, they Christian, I can't be around. How can you say that when Allah says, reverence the womb that bore you and respect all family ties? When we look at the prophet, life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that's our prime, our the best example for mankind. Anyone who believes in Almighty God and want to go straight, what did he do? First, I didn't even have this, but I just thought about it. His uncle never accepted Islam. That's that's one of the stories. He died on his bed, never accepted. But he took care and protected the prophet all of his life. And the prophet never said that he he took his the prophet took care of him all of his all of his life. That's our example. Also, when the Meccans were persecuting the Muslims, when they were a small band, the Muslim was a small group. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were being persecuted so bad. He took a small contingent, a small delegation, and sent them to, we know the story, sent them to uh, Abyssinia, to the uh, Christian king. He said, there's a good king, Christian king there, who will protect you. And they went there, I'll make the story short, they went there and told the king what was happening in the leaders of the Mecca. They followed them there to bring them back like a slave. You know, you, you, they leaving our religion, told the, the king they left the religion they, and they talked about your prophet, uh, talked about Christ Jesus. They said bad things about him. And the king said, well, called one of the delegates and said, tell me what you say about Christ Jesus. And they recited what had been revealed about Christ Jesus. And the king said, what they believe and what we believe is like this sand, this line in the sand. You, it's no different. I will protect them and you can stay here as long as you want. And he sent the pagans off. So what I'm saying is the prophet peace be upon him, he sent them to a Christian king showing that we can work with Christians. To us Muslims who have went to an extreme and said we can't work with nobody. We live in America with them. We go into school with Christians. We work with Christians. So why can't we, how can we say that in the Quran does not justify not working with other people? I'm getting off of my subject a little, but what am I saying? I'm saying that if come the time when we have to work with together for the good of humanity. You know, we look at our president, our new president, President Biden. The first thing, one of the first things that he did when he got in office was to call a prayer for the nation. Now, President Biden was a man of faith. He's a man of faith, not was, he is a man of faith. And he called a unity prayer for this nation, for America. And that's something we really needed. He did the right thing to call because we hadn't had no prayer in four years, not from the president. So this unity prayer was something that was needed. And all of this show us that these are signs from Almighty God. He had a Jewish rabbi. He had a Muslim imam. He had a Christian minister. And he had an American Indian. And they all prayed in unity for one thing, for the unity of America and the peace in America. These are signs, brothers and sisters, that we have to start working together as human beings. You know, as long as we have, as long as we have the influences in this society, and that's what influences us more, more than anything now, all these influences in this society, and we can get them so fast, we don't even see them. We got this, all this technology now, but they influence, influence us. So long as we have these influences in this society, bad influences in this society, we're gonna be divided. And it's because narrow-minded people, like I said, open-minded. And that, what that is is, when you have people arguing all the time, bickering all the time, can't agree on nothing, that comes from shaitan. Shaitan 
keep us divided, bickering over small things, infighting, small things. And long as we be divided over small things, we're going to be defeated. You're going to be defeated as a group. You're going to be defeated always. But when we come together as believers and we come together like this and we start working strong, we're going to be successful. As long as they keep you divided like this, you have no progress. We have to come together tight, working together. The first thing we have to have is faith in Almighty God. And then that will give us unity and strength. And if we got faith in Almighty God, that give us unity and strength, and all scriptures say the believers will always be successful and win every time. And this is in all scripture. So the people of faith will always be successful. And it also said in every scripture that Almighty God is sending signs always, always sending signs. So if we don't see the signs, intelligent as we say we are in this day and time, you know, in the Quran it said we walk down heedless. But if we don't see the signs, we're blind. We're blind, we got eyes, but we're blind if we don't see the signs, especially the people who have knowledge. And the scripture say, the sign's gonna be so clear. Even a fool can see the sign. That's what scripture says. So Almighty God send these signs, brothers and sisters. He send these signs to us. And he shows us that everything develops in stages. Even the signs has stages of development. It's stages of development in everything. Everything. When we look at all these movements we have now, we got so many movements now, and now all these, they go from one, just like anything else, one stage to another stage. Peaceful demonstration. Look at the peaceful demonstration. And then look at the demonstrations what are not peaceful. Stage to stage. We had Dr. Martin Luther King in the early 60s, peaceful demonstration. We had the Black Lives Movement, peaceful demonstration. We had the social justice movement for all people, for everyone, peaceful demonstration. But all these demonstrations evolved. They started small and in time, they evolved. They evolve, they evolve. But I'm talking about movements. I want to talk right now about, especially about the African American and people of color struggle in movement right now. You know, this term that we've been hearing lately, that I've been hearing lately, maybe you all heard it all your life, but it was new to me systemic racism. That was, that was a new term to me. My wife said, well, you don't know about that? You know, she was, I said, no, I don't, but I knew what it meant. But systemic racism, where things, racism in, in everything, but it's hidden, you know, it's hidden, it's under cover, it's hidden, subliminal. That language has even evolved. Because in my generation, it was called blatant racism. Not systemic, everybody knew what it was, it was wide open for the public and it was in your face. Here it is. I won't even get into it. I'm just showing you a point. Blatant. People was proud of it. No shame at all. Injustice. This, this was in, not, look, this was injustice done from one people to another people. This was a serious injustice. It said that slavery in America was so blatant so cruel that slavery had never existed like this before on any people. When you stole a whole people, mostly Muslim, from their country, listen at this, robbed them of their identity, robbed them of their dignity, and more than anything, robbed you of your human worth. Why do you think we have so many problems? They took your human worth. Now, what is human? Your human worth. You're not worth nothing. 
Matter of fact, it was in the Constitution that we were three fifths of a human being. You weren't even human. We weren't even human. Sign of a law. You know, the point I'm getting at is that with all of this I just said, that Alhamdulillah is, all of this that happened, Allah brought us through all of this, signs of Allah. And what this shows us is through his sign, through his mercy, what he's showing us that our time is not like a lost time. In scripture it says, I hope I got this right, that one day, one day in a lost time, it's like a thousand years, I'm gonna say I'm more of it. No, it's unlimited. And it takes us, our, 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 we'll never catch up with a lot. It's like our time. That's what it's telling us. You can't even conceive it in your mind. One day of a lot of time. We count day, day, day. No, that's not a lot of time. Our day is not a lot a of day. A lot of day is forever. And he tells his time. And in the Quran, it says, surely man is lost. In, by, by the token of time, man is lost. And we see that today. You know, what's so beautiful? Our parents. They had that Muslim DNA in their bodies. It was implanted in them. They didn't lose it. Through all of that I just said, they did not lose their Muslim DNA. Our parents used to tell us 50, 60 years ago when all this uh, oppression was going on. Through all of that they said, don't worry, son. Everything's in God's hand. And they said, and God is always on time. That, I mean, when I got to Islam, it was no, the language is no different. We can't judge a lost time. Now that's faith. That's what got them through slavery, Jim Crowism, discrimination, oppression. That faith is what got them through. And that's what made them deal and deal and fight and fight. I know it says that, you know, you're a slave, you didn't build nothing, you didn't fight nothing. No, they, they built that faith up in that heart so that we could inherit that faith, their children. Because they used to tell us, son, one day you'll be something. You're going to be this, you're going to be that, you're going to be this. But what happened is, what has happened is, we see it today. What they predicted 70, 80, 100 years ago is happening today. Look at the signs of Almighty God. But like I just said, our time is not like God's time. And they were fighting for dignity, for humanity, for the human dignity. That's what they were fighting for. Our heroes, Mark of God, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, Dr. King, Congressman John Lewis, Noble Drew Ali, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Imam Walter D. Muhammad, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali. And listen to this. President Obama, I just said, look at the time. The first, and some children, you know, if some children don't even know that we, up until just a couple of years ago, we had an African-American president or in, in the Senate, they think it's just normal because they don't know the history. But Allah blessed us to live through this and see the signs. And it was so, it was a miracle to us when we had an African-American president. But right behind that, look what's happened a couple of years later. They never had a female, not to mention a person of color. We never had a female in no high office like that. Now we have a person of color who's a female. Not only is she the first female, she's the first female person of color, person of any color, anything, to be in the second highest office in the world. Because when you become the president of the United States of America, whether you know it or know it not, you lead the world. You're a world leader. Vice President Kamala Harris, the first, another first. But all of these people who were freedom fighters, fighting for freedom, justice, and equality, they wasn't doing it for no one people. No, they wasn't doing it for just African Americans. No, they were doing it for all people, for humanity. That's what they were doing it for. Their sacrifices wasn't just for African-Americans, it was for humanity. 
And that's what we got to do. That's what we're trying to do today. Their work and their faith in Almighty God, that's what got them here. Their faith in Almighty God. And, you know, we might say, well, what is faith? We hear a lot of words on faith, but I heard a new definition from our imam. And he said, faith is not something that you see with your eyes. You cannot see faith with your eyes, but what you can understand with your spiritual senses is unseen. Ain't that something? We got all this with your spiritual senses. So if you don't, if you not have Almighty God in your in your soul, in your heart, and in your mind, and trying to please Almighty God, you don't have a spiritual sense. And in the religion, in the Quran, it says we have to bring our whole self into this religion. Your body, your mind, your soul, everything that you got. You have to bring everything that you got that's good in yourself right from your back to your natural creation. You have to bring everything into it. It's like being married. A good marriage. That's what happens when you get a good marriage. You, that's why good marriages be successful because you put everything you got into it. You got faith in Almighty God, you put everything into it. So all of these things have to be connected. They have to be married together. And then when you get all of that, you have to work for a purpose. Faith and work. You always have to work. Faith don't come by itself. It's work and faith. A faith and work. Either way it go. They go together like a marriage. And, you know, then you work for a purpose. We know Allah put us here to please him. Then you work for that purpose. And that purpose is working for dignity. Working again. Working for your human dignity. You know, our first identity Back to our identity, you know, our first identity. Our first identity is human. Being a human being. We had our human identity before we had any racial identity, before we had any ethnic identity. We had our human identity and our human identity is pattern after pattern that Almighty God created nature. If you want to see your real human identity, look at nature. Nothing in nature goes against Almighty God. Everything in nature acts in its order, obeying and submitting to the will of Almighty God, everything in nature. And that's the same way that Allah created our human nature. Now, you know, we say, well, I'm, man, you, you're taking away my identity. That racial identity, if you don't get your human identity, your racial identity will never be straight. I'm black. No, you got to be a human before you can be black. I'm white. I'm Arab. I'm this. No, you got to have your. That's why we have so many people in religion going astray. They haven't. They they have labels, but they can't fit that label into their human identity. So when you get your human identity adjusted, when you get into that and find out what your human identity is, then you can put all the different nationalities in them. Because nothing is wrong with the your, uh, uh, nationality because Almighty God tells us, I created you, tribes and nations, so that you can work together and know each other. But first look, and I, we, science, like uh, Imam was teaching on science, one of our Imam teaching on science, science proves that, proves that we all have the human, same human nature. When we cut, we all bleed. We all have skin. All of this nature, everything physical, just different colors different culture, different identity. So God show us this. Brothers and sisters, I'm getting a little behind myself, but I want to say one thing too. We're trying to get back to our humanity and we're trying to stand up for what's right. Another thing that we look at when, and I don't know if we recognize this or not, but all of this came while I was studying Quran. When we looked at George Floyd, signs of the time, signs of Allah, get murdered. And people were talking about Black Lives Matter and this and that, all these different, but it wasn't about that. What happened was we saw something happen that we had never seen before happen in our life. With this social media, all this technology Allah have given us, like we got Juma right now and we got Ju uh, uh, Zoom and we're having a Juma talk, Allah have blessed us. 
what happened was people from all over the world saw this murder, murder in person. They saw it with their own eyes. So what happened was Allah put this in all of us. It touched their soul. And it wasn't about he black. It was about like, this is wrong. And I can't stand up for nothing that's wrong. That's what happened. So when people see something, with their own, it touched them more. Human injustice. Nobody want to see human injustice. They touch their soul. They touch their true humanity. And they said, I cannot support that. You know, I want to just say that Almighty God has really blessed us. This first goodbye, you know, you might be saying, brother, this is supposed to be about glorifying Allah. I know it's about glorifying Allah. How can we glorify Allah better than telling in our own words, in our own language, so that people got other people who are not Muslims who under who need to know something, they, they want to hear something. We can tell our story in our own words of how Allah brought us from the depths of darkness into the light of Islam. I mean, all the way from the bottom. And that's another lecture, 30 Belaya. And he brought us as a people to be what? To be torchbearers, to bring light to this society. And our job is to do that. I know we know or heard about black on black and some naysayers. You got black on black crime, y'all killing each other. Yeah, we, we know about that. And we're going to handle that too. We're going to address that. But that's a whole nother lecture, a whole nother kutbah. But we have to think about this too when we talk about things like that. Back to what I just said. Society caused most of these problems. And there is cause and effect for everything that happened in this world. Cause and effect is in everything. And we have to be able now, brothers and sisters, to write our, and some, most of a lot of us are doing, write our own narrative. It's been too long people have been telling our stories. We have to tell our own story. When Imam came, first came in office in 1975, he told us, start writing our own books. Then we can get, and, and what, what would happen when we start writing our books? We will be telling our own story because we will be telling our truth. Rabbi Nah Tinati Dunya Hasanatan, Waki Akira Tia Sanatan, Waki Nah Dabi Nah, I mean. Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbi Lai Lameen. In continuing, I was going to read Surah 6 that's 16. But I'm gonna, let, let, let me read, I gotta read it. A'udhu billahi minna shaitan rajeem, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah says in the Holy Quran, were thou to follow the common run of those on earth, they will lead thee astray from the way of Allah. They follow nothing but conjecture, they do nothing but lie. Those two words, if I had left them out, I would have left my whole goodbye out. And this is ending it. We don't want to have to be believe in the lies, those lies what we heard of yesteryear, brothers and sisters. Think about that. All those lies that we had yesterday, yesterday, yesteryear, what was told on us and what we used to tell and we didn't know no better. We don't have to believe in those lies no more. And all scripture said it's a sin to lie. But what they told us was, it's just a little white lie. It don't make no difference. It's just a lie. Listen at this. That lie grows. That lie starts real little, real small, and it grows. And that's what Shaitan does. He tell you, it's all right. Don't do it. And that lie grows to disbelief. It grows to greed. And then what it really grows to is cheating and hatred. It grows like a mountain. That's what extremists does. They get that hate in them, they get that lie in them, and it just grow, grow. You ever seen a volcano on the TV? It, it blow, they say it's gonna blow in a minute. And what happened is in a minute, it just blow, boom. And when it blow, fire shoots out of it and roll down the mountain. And it just causes confusion and just Everywhere it goes, it just destroys. Whatever get in its way. 
That's what happens. That's, that's what happens. Starts with a small lie, and it leads to those lies lead to ignorance. Ignoring. Our imam did one of our imam did a talk on that. Ignoring. When you ignore the when you get a lie and ignore the truth, it equals ignorance. Ignoring the truth equals ignorance. That's what it is. So in closing. What happened when those people, that's what I call them, attack our country, our capital. I'm saying our country, our capital. That's what happened to them. And the bad thing about it, people, is that they really thought and believed in what in that lie, everybody knew. It was a gigantic lie. But when you manipulate people, man, like that, you see where it can lead them. And inshallah, Justice will deal with that. Another could buy also. So what we're saying today is we see things happening today. All of these things are signs from Allah that we must recognize. And in the past surah, Allah says in surah 21-18, truth knocks out falsehood's brain. So we'll close with that and say, we want to do a prayer, a silent prayer for all of the people. We know this pandemic is still ramping. It's, it's getting hot. Uh, it's ramping up. It's not going away. It looks like it's coming more. We've had people to lose their lives, to lose, be affected by it. So whoever has lost their lives, we're praying for them. Whoever has been affected by this pandemic, we're praying for them. We're praying for all the frontline workers. And when I say frontline workers, I'm talking about the people from the hospital to the people who keep the hospital clean, to the people, everybody who's doing a service to keep this country and this world going. Take the position of prayer. You do your own private prayer for them and we'll close out. I mean, we wanna ask everybody to wear your mask, wash your hands, stay, social distance as much as you can stay in if you don't have to go out and we will close the juma out with that and if you are with a group of three or more who can lead the prayer you can do your two rakas and uh if you're not with that group you do your four rakas that's the zua prayer we will have announcements from our We'll close out first, and then we will have announcements from our community affairs chairman, and she'll turn it back over to me, and then we'll close out once more. Rabbi na ati na fi dunya hasanatan, wafi aki ati hasanatan, waki na adabi na, I mean. Sister Angel, you have it. Assalamu alaikum community. I bring you greetings of peace and love. I wanted to share with you just a few um, announcements. The rest will be in your email. So be on the watch for those as uh, per usual. Uh, just a quick reminder that again, I wanted to remind you that we are in our um, COVID uh, quarantine still. And uh, we have a committee that is meeting. You know that we have our task force uh, to discuss our safety guidelines. And we also have a representative that is meeting with the rest of the Masajid in the area to discuss um, the committee guidelines and the decision uh, for the Shura Council for our uh, Masjid. So we are making close contact with all of the rest of the Masajid in the area to make sure we are up to date on all of those those decisions and we will keep you abreast of what is going on. At this time, we are remaining closed for the safety of all of our members. Um, and we are going to discuss any future changes with you in our community checkups. Remember our community checkups are being held via phone conference. Uh, they have been moved to every two weeks and the next one will be held on February 4th and the times are at 7 p.m. So be sure to tune in for that. Uh, so that you will st stay up to the late, the, up to date on the latest knowledge uh, that is being disseminated. If you have any questions, feel free to chime in on those calls at that time. This week, we'll, we will have our virtual Talim. The information and the link has been sent to you on your email. Uh, the date for that is Sunday, January 31st at 1.15 p.m. 
inshallah. I'm just scrolling through my notes here so that I won't uh, read to you every single thing. Our fundamental financial series will be on the third Monday of every month. The next upcoming one is February 15th, and that is being held virtually for your safety. So please tune in to that. There's no charge for that at this time, and we are blessed to have that. The Halal Food Pantry. We are blessed that we have not had any uh, pause in doing our service to the community in that. And Alhamdulillah, we are still having our Halal Food Pantry this weekend. The next service is this Saturday, January 30th, 2021, from 12 to 3 p.m. That is on tomorrow. So we will need all the volunteers we can uh, benefit from. Please come out and help us serve the community. Again, 12 to 3 p.m. on tomorrow, inshallah. Our dear associate Imam Mufid Abdullah returned to Allah this week. May his sins be forgiven and Allah grant him the eternal paradise. The Janaza prayer services for our dear brother Imam will be held inshallah next Tuesday in Mumford, Tennessee at the Mumford Funeral Home. The address is 1136 Tipton Road and the burial to follow at Helen Krigger Cemetery at 246 Beaver Road. So if you are able to attend, please do so. Uh, remember COVID safety precautions will be followed. So make sure that you are aware of social distancing precautions, um, physical distancing and wearing masks. Uh, the janazah will be according to all Islamic protocols. So be aware of that prior to coming, but we would love to have that support there for the family as well. And please make sure you check your email for the rest of the announcements. It has been my pleasure and privileged to come to you uh, to read those announcements. So I bear you glad tidings. Assalamu alaikum community. At the time we'll close out. Rabbina la tazikul hubina ba'da is hadaytina wa hablana min adunka rahma inaka atta wa Our Lord do not let our heart deviate now after thou has guided us. But grant us mercy from your own presence. For you are the grand tour. Amen. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Jumma Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Jumma Mubarak.